Cacio is sheep's milk cheese. Pecorino Romano um, is a type of cacio. Oh my, she knows what she's talking about. Rachel, come on, I'm getting excited. I'm getting excited. So excited! What I do that's a little different for cacio and pepe is I toast the pasta. I toast the pasta. <laughs> Hi guys, today we are reacting to Rachel Ray Cacio e Pepe, toasted Cacio e Pepe. She's a very famous cook or chef, and let's see if she can make Cacio e Pepe, toasted. When I first um, met my husband, John, well, the first year we were together, I offered to cook him a special birthday dinner, and I said, I'll make you anything in the world that you want. I'll make you lobster thermidor, or a perfect steakhouse supper. What do you want for your birthday? Every birthday, Valentine's Day, special occasion, any anniversary of anything, for now uh, 18 years we've been together, 13 we've been married. Well, she put butter in the pan, so I'm assuming she's probably making a, a steak, Gordon Ramsay style, a little bit of butter, maybe some uh, rosemary, some pepper, black pepper. I have to make carbonara for John. It's Oh, carbonara, yeah, bravo, John. I wanna see how you make carbonara, Rachel. Carbonara is just bacon and eggs, pancetta or guanciale, and eggs with pasta and cheese. It's a very simple, straightforward recipe. Brava, 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 brava. It does not have cream in it, it doesn't have all the other loops and things. Yay. That people add to it. Once you take it away from bacon and eggs, it's no longer carbonara. Equally simple as what I'm gonna show you guys today, but it's got a twist to it. Today we're gonna make cacio e pepe. It's kind of in the top 10 for sure, not just for John, but for- Wait, 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 what's the twist? The butter? The twist. So Rome has four pastas. One is the carbonara, the other one is the cacio e pepe, which is basically a carbonara without the eggs and without the meat. So it's vegetarian, it's basically just pasta and lots of uh, cheese, pecorino cheese, and lots of pepper. In carbonara, you do use dry pasta because it absorbs best the cream. Um, and the egg pasta will be too much with the egg sauce. So dry pasta for carbonara. In the cacio e pepe, instead, it's nice with the fresh egg pasta because you don't have egg in the sauce. You only have pecorino and pepper in the sauce. So the egg pasta actually tastes better for the cacio e pepe. Then you have amatriciana. Amatriciana is basically a carbonara without eggs, but with tomato sauce. Same ingredients of carbonara, no eggs, tomato sauce. And again, here you normally use bucatini because it's a type of big spaghetti with a hole in the middle. It's got a nice soft texture. It will work well. And I think soft pasta will go well as well. And the last but not least is a gricia, pasta la gricia, which is basically a carbonara without the eggs, but with the guanciale. So guanciale, pecorino, pepper, no eggs. The whole family. And cacio is sheep's milk cheese. Pecorino Romano um, is a type of cacio. Oh my, she knows what she's talking about. Rachel, come on, I'm getting excited. I'm getting excited. So excited! So excited! Traditionally, this is a dish that's made with cacio. So salty, delicious, grated. Yeah. Pecorino cheese and pepe. Pepper. Coarse black pepper. Yeah, simple, easy, simple, but you need to follow the right technique. Of course, you need to marry that with the pasta. So really, you're talking about three ingredients. Yes. What I do that's a little different for cacio e pepe is I toast the pasta. I toast the pasta. Okay, I'm interested. Toast the raw spaghetti in this case until it's deep, deep, deep brown and super fragrant. I don't get it. Why do you need to do that? Okay, let's watch, but why? And when it's done, it tastes like pasta had a love baby with toasted nuts. It sounds good. So oh, good. <laughs> You're definitely an entertainer. So to toast the pasta, I have a combination of EBOO, extra virgin olive oil, three turns of the pan, moderate heat, nice medium flame on the stove. When the olive oil starts to ripple, I add in three tablespoons or three pats of butter. 
when the butter bubbles and begins to foam, then you add your pasta. Okay, so there is a specific technique. Now, I'm assuming the pasta is going in raw, from my understanding. Um, what's that pasta brand? I've never seen it before. Um, looks like a, an artisan pasta. Post it until it's super dark. One pound of good quality spaghetti is what we're using. That's a lot of pasta to fit in the pan. Does it fit? It does fit. And then we're going to add the... Uh, they look like good spaghetti. The color is light. You can see it's good, good, good quality. Most of our two star ingredients are pepper. So we're going to add about a tablespoon, so three fat pinches of coarse black pepper. Guys, I'm really enjoying this so far. I find, I find it interesting. Oh my god, this smells so good already and I haven't done it. So much pepper. There's so much pepper! That's the perfect amount of pepper! So now we're gonna let this toast in a big wide skillet until that's really deep, deep, deep brown. Wow, 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 wow. See how dark brown that is? Oh my god, look how dark it is. Where have we are they, have they burnt? I mean, you know, they're toasted, they're toasted, I don't know, but... What the hell are you doing, Rachel? What happened to the spaghetti? What's the need to do this to... I mean, I love my cacio e pepe the way it is. Nice, simple, uh, delicate, I really love it. I just cannot imagine to have cacio e pepe served this way. Why would you ruin a beautiful classic? But I'm interested to see what you're doing. And that makes this really nutty and super fragrant. When it gets to this color, then you can add in one quart of... So it's basically yeah, toasted, but like burned as well. Wow. Water and turn the heat up a little bit and bring that water up to a boil. Then we're gonna cook this, stirring it occasionally to develop the starches. We're gonna cook this about six to seven minutes. And then we're gonna add in our cheese for the last two minutes of cook time. I'm mean, trying to understand how you come up with this recipe and why John, your husband John, wants this. Hey John, don't you just like normal cacio e pepe, but if you're on TV, you're inspiring everyone. Hey, you're actually motivating me, inspiring me to try it. That's what's going on. Normally when we make any sort of pasta dish, you reserve the starchy cooking water to marry the pasta to the sauce. Essential in making the sauce and the pasta kind of get along. In this- Hey, she's good, this lady. She's very good at talking, entertaining. Hmm. I would love to be invited by Rachel Ray. Of course, we cooked the pasta in the skillet with just one quart of water, so we don't have that starchy cooking water. Doesn't really look inviting. I'm sorry, Rachel, I like you. You're great. It looks like a, it's a whole meal, whole meal pasta. I don't want a pasta that looks like all wheat, all meal pasta. No, 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 no. I want a pasta that looks like tornarelli, you know, or uh, nice thick spaghettoni. Beautiful. I don't want this color for my cacio pepe. To work with. But I want you to start adding the cheese when there's still a little bit of liquid left in the bottom of the pan and two minutes less than the package directions. Great, great, great. The reason why you leave the water in there is because the water helps to create that cream. You don't want to have too much water because if you have too much water, then you're going to have lumps and no. You want just enough water to turn that cheese into cream. But this is the reason why, well, let's see what she's going to do, but this is the reason why I always say when you make cacio pepe, you want to use the pasta water and add it to the cheese and create what I say, the pre-cream. So you basically combine cheese, pecorino cheese and water to create like a big uh, bowl, big dense thick bowl made of pecorino. And when you add that to the pasta with a little bit of pasta water, that cheese slowly, slowly melts and turns into cream. If you're going to put the grated cheese now, right now in there, you do risk hmm, to have shrinks, to, to have lumps, and not to turn the cacio pepe the way it should be. Now, you also toasted the pasta. Is the pasta able to absorb the cheese the way it should? I don't know, let's see. So if the package says cook for nine minutes, start adding the cheese to the pasta around seven minutes and stir for two minutes. You with me? 
I like that she doesn't count that much cheese, and that's, that's the way it should be. You just add as much cheese as you like. So Rachel is doing the right thing. She knows what she's doing. I mean, John is married with her, so John must be, I mean, John is still married with her, so I'm sure he knows how to please the husband. Need that time to build the sauce from that last little bit of starch and water all together. My God, I can't even make a sentence. This smells so good. <laughs> yeah, it's so good, so good. You can also toss the pasta, Rachel. I'm sure you know how to toss. I'm like, whatever, figure it out for yourselves. Just look in the pan. <laughs> but look, look at that. Oh, it's just incredible that just three ingredients um, okay, it's a TV show, you have to clap. The lady on the right is saying, I watched Vincenzo making cacio pepe, and he didn't do this. How is he going to do now? The lady on the left said, Rachel, mannaggia, Rachel, mannaggia. Can you just do it the normal way? Those two phases, see? They say it to you. Keep it real. That cheese doesn't look good. Black pepper and pasta can smell so good. It's just incredible. And you can literally... Be struggling to mix. It doesn't look that good, guys. It doesn't look good. I'm sorry. It just doesn't look good. The cheese is not turning into cream. You can make this literally, I bet you, 80% of the people in this room have all of these ingredients already at home. And of course you can use parm cheese if you don't have... Huh? Use what? And of course you can use parm cheese if you don't... What parm cheese? What's parm cheese? Parmigiano. I heard parmesan. Parmesan. What's parm cheese now? Come on, guys. Let's... Give it one name to this. How many names does your husband have? John? Maurizio? Eh? Jeffrey? Justin? You call him John, do you? Parmigiano has one name. Parmigiano. We have the uh, pecorino. And we have our beautiful, refreshing, minty salad to go along with it. Aspetta, aspetta. Why does the minty salad go with it? To clean your palate, okay. So you basically toasted the pasta so it goes well with the, so with the salad. If you wanted something toasted, you just get toasted nuts, you put them in the salad, and you enjoy the salad. But the pasta is not meant to be toasted, okay? Are you gonna put the pasta together with the salad? What's going on here? What's going on here? How's it going? Hey, how are you? What's, what's going on here? <laughs> I'm just like, what's going on here? And I serve it right from the pan. Just take it right to the table. Oh. Guys, the pasta didn't turn out good. I'm sorry, Rachel, great idea. Uh, the tossing was not done, uh, the cheese didn't turn creamy. It's on the cashew pepe, I'm sorry. I don't want to be rude, I want to be invited to your show, Rachel, please, but this is not cashew pepe, I'm sorry. He, he called it toasted cashew pepe. Hey, John, let's go back to rum together and let's have a real cashew pepe, okay? Yeah? <laughs> Guys, uh, let's see. Clearly, this Rachel Ray is loved in uh, in the USA and around the world, but I recommend you, Rachel, watch my video. Hi, and welcome to Vincenzo's Play. Today, I'm showing you how to make the perfect cacio e pepe pasta. Oh, yeah. Using... See how creamy this cacio e pepe is? Look at that. Look at that cacio e pepe. Look how creamy it is, okay? It is creamy. You do want a little bit of uh, runny liquid in the plate because when you do this and mix your pasta that kind of liquid will turn into cream okay it needs to be a little bit runny when you put it in the plate because in the plate is where the magic begins three simple ingredients pecorino cheese a good quality black pepper see and i like to toast my pepper toasted pepper not toasted pasta and spaghetti the perfect cacio pepe for you not too much, see? That's all I'm using. That's all I'm using. See that? Can I see? Probably even too much. Um, I want to use any... You know before when I spoke about adding the water into the cheese so you can create a dense, like a bowl of pecorino? This is what I'm talking about. A little bit less than that. Because what I want to create here, I want this to be thick. So can you see how beautiful and creamy this is? Yeah. See that? Yeah. It's, it's nothing thick. This is what we're going to... This is what it's going to make the cream for a cacio e pepe. That's what I'm talking about. You add this to the pasta at the end, a little bit of pasta water, you're done. 
I'll show you. Here is the cheese, and I'm gonna put it inside. Hold in. And look what's happening right now, okay? The pasta water is gonna turn this into cream. What you don't want from the cashew pastry is to get um, the the cheese tutto filante. Like you don't want to get strings when you do this. You don't want to see strings of cheese, eh, Suzanne? Right, so it has to melt. The oil has to melt. I want to make sure everything melts. But you turn the heat off, didn't you? The heat you must be off. The heat is off because if you don't do that, you get the strings and you might get lumps as well. You don't want that for cashew paper. Yeah. Yes. Because otherwise it would cook the cheese. Like that's right, that's right, that's right. You just look at that. Now it might look a little bit runny, but what's gonna happen is I'm gonna toss it now gently, and when I put it in the plate, that type of runny uh, looks like a cream, it's gonna turn into a thicker cream, okay, in the plate, okay? It is important. And don't forget that the cheese eventually will become harder, you know? So look, you need to do this right now. It's important you make your pasta jump. Oh my God, this is super, super, super creamy. Come and have a look. Look how creamy this cacio e pepe is. Here you've got beautiful pepper over there. You've got creaminess. It's like a rainy um, pecorino. <laughs> Raining pecorino, I love that. Ooh. See how creamy it is, it's creamy. A little bit runny, but it's great. You put it in the plate, you enjoy it. It's nice, smooth, easy to eat, rich in flavor because the pecorino is salty, rich, gives you a very nice kick. But this is the way it should be done, Rachel Ray. I want cacio pepe right now. I do feel like cacio pepe. I'm going to Rome next week to have carbonara, cacio pepe. Oh, I cannot wait. I'm going to have three carbonara on one day and three cacio pepe on the other day. You know why? because I'm going searching for the best carbonara and best cacio pepe. So the videos are coming out soon on Vincenzo's plate. Stay tuned. Or maybe they're already out. So check them out. So guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. I had fun. I love cacio pepe. Let me know. Do you prefer cacio pepe or carbonara? And have you ever had problems creating carbonara or cacio pepe? Let me know. Because if you need a video where I show you step by step how to make the perfect cream, I'll do that, okay? So we can talk about the mistakes that you make, that we all made, okay? So thank you and I'll see you in the next reaction video or maybe video recipe. Sunday video recipe, reaction video on Wednesday. E ora si mangia. Vincenzo's plate.